Welcome to Clearwater County Podcasts, an ongoing conversation about the issues that matter to residents and businesses of Clearwater County. Audio versions are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and other streaming services. This is a special broadband series where we'll be taking a deeper dive into the county's open access network, a groundbreaking initiative that promises to revolutionize connectivity for businesses and residents across the county. With three out of six project phases completed, the OAN will leverage over 360 kilometers of fiber optic cable, known as the core backbone, and strategically placed wireless towers to deliver high-speed internet connectivity throughout Clearwater County. I'm here today with the president, owner of RigStar, Dan Grisdale. RigStar is Clearwater County's network operator for our open access network, or what some people refer to as our broadband optic fiber network. Managed collaboratively by RigStar Industrial Telecom, And Arcadis, Clearwater County's OAN, represents a significant leap forward in delivering high-speed and reliable internet services to the majority of county residents. It will provide high-speed and reliable connectivity, enhancing learning outcomes for students and enabling businesses to thrive. Welcome, Dan. Thanks for having me. I really am excited to be here. Well, um, it's an interesting industry. How did you, with RigStar, get into um, broadband services? <laughs> well, I guess it's been a, a long and winding path, really. Uh, uh, originally, we, RigStar started in 1998. Um, we were an uh, oil field uh, remote communications provider, which meant we just kind of had uh, local communication circles around oil rigs and service rigs and whatnot. And then uh, as we started to expand uh, and uh, technology developed in about uh, around 2005, we bought a small little wireless ISP that operated just south of Calgary in Langdon. And we felt that, you know, uh, we could learn the business of uh, an ISP on how to operate it. And especially with the wireless dimension, we could uh, use the, the radio technology, which we would probably have to use in the oil field. And uh, it was a little independent uh, provider. So uh, although we always want to provide top-notch uh, quality to all the people that we serve, we felt that it would be better to cut our teeth with a small residential okay. and then move into uh, the enterprise market with the bigger oil goes. That's kind of how we got into it, and then we just uh, really ran from there. Uh, we we, we uh, built a data center with a, a, a major provider in the, in the early 2000s. Uh, we had some wireless network that ran a circle around Calgary. Uh, as that technology changed from ATM to Ethernet, we just continued to build on that, then fiber, and uh, here we are. So you've basically just grown with all the changes it's that have happened over time. It's pretty much organic. We, we, we've pretty much, we've tried to be right on the cutting edge. In fact, uh, in two weeks, we're going to be uh, 25 years old as a company. Well, so that's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's been a good run. So Clearwater County uh-huh. has been installing infrastructure mm-hmm. to um, make a broadband network mm-hmm. th- throughout the county. And it's going to be an open a- access network. Could you give an overview of what that means? Because um, RigStar is going to be managing this open access network for the county. RigStar believes that Clearwater County has done really a very exceptional job of planning and deploying a very robust core backbone network. And uh, this is providing a real solid foundation for an open access network. And that type of network allows for uh, multiple providers to ledger, le- leverage that same infrastructure. So all players get a a level playing field because they're using the same robust network. And that in turn reduces costs and it reduces environmental impact by, you know, it removes the need to duplicate networks. You know, you're not building three highways when you just need one. And you focus on a single resilient network. And uh, this really allows for independent providers to enter the market and uh, takes away a lot of the major up, upfront costs uh, for some of the smaller providers that want to get into uh, the business. Um, so that it lowers the barrier to entry. 
and that allows for more competition in the marketplace and it really increases the service value of what Clearwater County is offering to the people. Um, so, you know, the mandates and philosophies of an open access network are pretty much uh, counterintuitive or opposite of uh, what traditional carriers do. You know, the traditional carriers, privately owned network, they operate it, it's controlled by a single entity, and they're the ones that have the authority to uh, determine its policies, security measures, and access rights, where, whereby uh, the open access network that Clearwater is designed and built. Uh, it's designed to serve a broader community for the region, offers connectivity to various service providers and uh, end users, and it promotes competition, and it also gives consumer choice. And uh, we're, we're getting awfully close in time <laughs> <laughs> for, for uh, our residents, our taxpayers, to be sure. able to actually get, get that service, which is awfully exciting. Um, we're, we've been doing expressions of interest, mm -hmm. trying to, hey, what companies are interested in coming? And we have companies that are talking with us and with you guys about how to do things. Where can those carriers or telecommunication companies go to get information? Well, I think that interested, you know, carriers or telecommunication providers or internet service providers, they could go to uh, both the Clearwater County website, uh, clearwatercounty.ca slash p slash network operator rigstar or you can just go to rigstar.ca and uh, look for our operation network operations uh, tab and click on that or alternatively alternatively you can call our knock which is 24 7 at 1-888-400-1984 okay mm -hmm. now clearwater county owns this network but you're going to be managing it so what, what, what does that mean? Where, where do the responsibilities sort of split between, uh, you know, for, for whether it's maintenance or expansion repairs? Well, uh, I could say from the start, uh, you know, Clearwater County and Rigstar, we've really solidified a positive working relationship. We've really uh, learned from each other. We've, we've had a great positive experience. And so uh, we feel that our team recognizes the kind of positive impact that the network will have on the community and Rigstar is committed to providing exceptional service and uh, Rigstar along with our channel partner Arcadis will be responsible for operating and, and managing this network to ensure that all the telecom providers receive live 24-7 support through our network operations center. Okay so um, basically Rigstar will be responsible for if there's a problem that's correct. Call you guys. That's correct. Okay, perfect. Um, now, when we talk about open access mm -hmm. um, as a model, how you know, we, uh, you've already said that we're trying to make a level playing field. Um, wh how will this allow more competition? Like, uh, I know our some of the big players they build their own. Nobody else is allowed to use it. Open access means what? Well, you know, uh, it's uh, actually open access uh, is really quite a lively uh, debate in, in the marketplace right now. And, and for that exact reason, uh, I think that um, traditional carriers have been uh, protective, as they should, of their investment in their networks. And, and uh, so it's been hard for uh, independence to kind of gain a foothold to provide service. Uh, uh, there's the CRTC has tried to mandate some of that, but at the end of the day, it's really going to be left up to the marketplace. Uh, I was just down at a, a well, uh, a telecom open access uh, conference in the U.S. and I was chatting with some people there, and some people have different levels of. Uh, success and uh, one person I talked to from East Oregon they said they, they built one but no one came so the, the county had to step up and, and become the ISP but I, I feel that you know there's enough uh, I, I feel that the the network the core broadband network that uh, Clearwater County has built is high enough quality it's world-class quality and so I think that it will certainly attract 
a lot more uh, ISPs to come here. And the, the way I think it works, uh, there's a, a, a software that's de been developed out of Sweden that manages open access networks. And they found that originally the carriers in that country were you know, a bit hesitant to join or go on someone's network. And other people, uh, other ISP players are a bit hesitant, like, how does this work? And it, it's been a, a tremendous success, and it's really allowed um, the network to flourish, and it's allowed connectivity to flourish in, in remote areas. Sweden has remote areas, just like Canada. And uh, I, I think what you see there is, you know, you can have ISP players that come in and just say, okay, if it's about price, we're just going to offer you this little wedge but then you can go up the whole service chain and other providers can attract other users by providing managed Wi-Fi services all kinds of incidentally benefits that they can come off of the connection that they have uh, on the on the broadband network and I think that's uh, once that starts to roll I think that you'll see that uh, there'll be a, a, tr a tremendous success on this network because the, the county, basically, we want the service for our residents, and we're not trying to pick winners or losers. We, exactly. We want whoever can and is willing to come and provide service, come and provide service. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think that one of the discussion points, too, that always comes up is it's just a race to the dollar to the bottom, right? And uh, I think that if it's a really true, effective, open access network, that doesn't happen. Okay. Because there's always going to be economic uh, decisions, but the economic decisions are what level of service do you want? Do you want just do it yourself, DIY? Someone drops a box in, and that's it, and you just get you pay low dollars for low connectivity, or you can go all the way to the top, get white glove service. Like I mentioned before, have a managed broadband services. You can add on a lot of things, security. So, yeah, and, and that's. A major part is I know for many of our residents they think of their home but really the biggest demand is actually in the business sector um, try you know they cannot get high enough capacity or or speed mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do what businesses need to do I've heard from local businesses that you know their headquarters might be here and they're trying to do training to their staff up in Grand Prairie or or somewhere else and with uh, what's currently available Unfortunately, it's just it's it's a little bit limited. So we're really hoping this network will enable those businesses to do what they want. Well, I think it would be kind of a two pronged thing, right? It, it's going to drive economic benefit for the county because uh, you know the more connected connected you are, the the more you're uh, connected to the global business, right? And so that also allows the local businesses to attract higher level of talent if they can get not just great internet at the business, but also at their home where they right. reside. And then it also can dr uh, drive a lot of um, uh, home, home based businesses, right? And if, if you want to choose to live in you know, like a really beautiful county like Clearwater is, uh, with nature and all, all the things that that has to offer, you, you can come out here and run a business if you have really strong connectivity, so. Okay. Um, so of concern to everybody, residents and businesses, is of course protection of privacy, data security. Uh, what does, how does our network and what does Rigstar do to help make sure that our, our, our information for our people is secure on our network? Sure. Uh, well, I, to me, that's kind of one of my big uh, things that I like to protect too is privacy, you know, especially on the, on the network and especially as a company. So I think, uh, you know, the design of the network itself uh, provides isolated circuits between the individual providers and the customers they serve. So in effect, there's a direct path that cannot be infringed or spied upon by other providers within the network. So customer data, including any billing records, stays completely be between the customer and their chosen provider as the open ac access network simplifies and facilitates the connection through an entirely insulated circuit 
and does not in itself have any need to store or process that type of information. Okay. So, yeah, it's like, fairly robust. And, I mean, people use their cell phones all the time or they could connect it to a Wi-Fi in a local store or restaurant. This is going to be more secure than that. Oh, definitely, definitely, infinitely, right? And especially nowadays, uh, open Wi-Fi and even, you know, cellular, there's, there's a lot of nefarious things that have been happening. Yeah. And it depends on your apps and all that. But but on our network? On your network, the isolated circuits, total privacy. Okay, awesome. Total security. Now, uh, once we've got service, and it's coming soon, mm -hmm. how can uh, the county or, or our residents actively provide feedback on you know how they how their service levels are or or even in the development of open access network or they, if they have questions about that for sure yeah and uh, as i alluded earlier i think the real success of an open access access network really is highly dependent on that right uh, i think that active participation and feedback from both the municipality and its residents are really essential to like ensure that success and the performance and the development of the open access network is all hand in hand with uh, the, the feedback from both the municipality and the residents and the businesses, right? And uh, Rigstar and our channel partner Arcadis will probably conduct surveys, will distribute questionnaires to residents and we'll, we, we want to collect a lot of opinions to see how they feel the, the system's running do they have opinions or concerns or suggestions regarding the network's performance and other areas of improvement and areas of, uh, you know, uh, the more remote areas too. I think that's going to be probably tantamount uh, to making sure that like even the farthest people or the businesses get uh, the same kind of high right. performance. So. Yeah. Our topography does not make the service easy. Yeah, well... Uh, you know, uh, that's one thing that Rigstar has tremendous experience in is uh, crazy isolated topography. Uh, we are the telecom service provider for the Coastal Gas Link uh, construction project. So we have eight mountaintop repeaters that have been servicing 15 camps. So we know how to manage uh, service in remote areas. Okay. That's and good. urban areas. Because we've got a lot of people that are spread out over some big areas here. Sure, yeah. And people love living in the mountains or in the valleys, so. <laughs> As do I. <laughs> yeah, well, the Rigstar team, you know, we also encourage local businesses to provide their feedback and, and let us know how the network is impacting their overall operations. Okay. So, if there's anything we could do to improve it to make the system better, that, uh, that's why we're here. Great. Um, so to wrap up, mm. what is something you would you want our residents to know about either rig store or or an open access network? Yeah, so rig store, twenty five years. Our mantra has been customer service, uh, but our, one of our other mantras too is to be uh, carrier technology agnostic. And that's really helped us learn and develop from a myriad of technologies so that we don't get siloed. And I think that one thing that the, the open access network is that, right? It's, it, it's, it's, it's going to allow for a lot of uh, expedited um, service through competition. And uh, I think that the municipality should be lauded for really the world class uh, broadband connectivity that they've laid down so far, and you know it's exciting for the future. Oh, we're glad to hear hear that. Yeah. So you have quite a bit of experience then in, in working with a variety. Like you don't just serve one large company, or you know a whole no, bunch of no, others. No, we've uh, we've like I said, we have a, a rural ISP that's been operating for upwards of twenty years as uh, ranchers, small towns. That's kind of been our, our, our business and also major enterprise. Um, and we see the importance of connectivity, like for all communities. And I think that you'll see that uh, for the First Nations too. I think you'll see 
an incredible level of support to them that will really help their business and their communities as well. Okay, sounds great. I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to the to the day when we're turning lights on and so are we getting all that service we're out already. there. Already. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in, Dan. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, all right.